Okay, in this video uh, we're going to talk about the four quadrant model in uh, chapter 11. And I just want to start by showing that we can analyze the characteristics of each of the quadrants by snapping them off and looking at them individually. So let's start with the top uh, right hand quadrant where we have the stock of space and rents and this is we've got a demand curve so that that's our relationship between rents and demand for space in the top left hand corner we've got uh, well let me put price up here it doesn't really matter which axis I put it on I uh, could I could put it down here or I could put it up here that's what I'm gonna do um, and we have rents down there and we have a relationship that looks something like this and that just says that notice that uh, our our line here crosses at the origin and that just means that for even very small levels of rents uh, somebody is willing to pay a price to capture those rents and that's true for uh, small levels of rents and large levels of rents. And let's look at the bottom left hand quadrant. And we've got uh, construction, I'll put that there, and price. And here our line doesn't start at the origin, it starts a little ways. Uh, up the up the y-axis um, and that is just to say the meaning of that is that builders won't begin construction until um, they're paid a certain amount uh, that probably has to do with them recovering uh, certain fixed costs so they won't begin any construction until they're paid a certain amount and then they'll uh, construct an increasing amount as the price rises And finally, we've got the stock of space and construction. And I'll put the stock of space up there and construction on this axis. And the relationship there, that does start at the origin. We get something like that. And again, that means for any level of construction, that increases the stock of space, even at very low levels. And that's true for high levels as well. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, the full four quadrant model. And I'm going to see if I can provide a little bit of insight into how to draw these diagrams effectively. Uh, so let me first label this. So we've got stock here, um, rents here prices here and construction there and one thing that I'm doing is I'm drawing all of these lines at 45 degree angles now the exact the angles aren't incredibly important there's no reason uh, theoretically at least that these lines ought to be drawn at 45 degree angles but what's important to us is not their uh, absolute position, but what happens when we change the position of one of, of these lines, uh, if we shift a demand curve, for example. And we want to find the new equilibrium. And what's important there is the direction of change and not the magnitude of change. So it's OK if we draw these lines in a somewhat stylized fashion. Now what I'm doing here is finding the equilibrium based on these three lines and then uh, inserting the final line and that's just so that the the um, I'm able to line up all the corners of this uh, box which represents our equilibrium easily otherwise it can be a little bit difficult but this uh, this technique will line them up perfectly okay so first let's try shifting the demand curve out now, because we've drawn uh, th at least three of our lines 
in a uh, at 45 degree angles there's a neat sort of trick and that is that if we start our new uh, equilibrium at a at a diagonal we should be able to find the new equilibrium relatively quickly and exactly and that's true so we see that we we've been able to line up our uh, all the corners of the box in one go really quickly and easily just because we've drawn most of these lines at a 45 degree angle and we can use this simple rule to draw this new um, symmetric equilibrium box now uh, we can just analyze this and say that well now that we see that demand has shifted out rents have increased uh, prices have increased um, the rate of construction has increased and the stock of space has increased let's take a look at another example this time we'll shift the demand curve inwards so let's try that I'll label it before I go any further. So we've got stock of space, construction, price, and rents there. And okay, let's get a distinctive color. And we'll shift our box inwards. And again, I'm going to go for a diagonal here to get started on. You don't have to draw that line, or you could draw it and then erase it. Ah, I'm missing fourth and final line aren't I so let's put that in there and notice by the way that these two lines here aren't related sometimes they look like they're the same line um, but they're they're actually two different lines and there's no reason that they have to be uh, parallel to each other they could be um, but they don't have to be okay let's continue finding our new equilibrium okay so that's not it's not perfect it doesn't line up absolutely perfectly but it's very very close and it gives us um, it gives us the right idea we know that we're on the right track and we can observe what happens when we have a shift inwards of the demand curve we see that rents drop um, prices drop the rate of new construction drops and the stock of space drops okay so I'm running out of time here. I'm going to go through a couple more examples, but I think we'll do that in the next video. I'll see you then.